Hello YouTube, I'm Zach, you're watching Zach DTV. Thanks for stopping in to the place for interesting news from around the net. Today we're going to talk about the Muppets. They have a Kickstarter going, how you could help them. We're also going to look into some criminal computing, the biggest military drone I've ever seen. We're also going to look at some scientific uses for drones, the way they've never been used before. And we're going to wrap up with a great escape by a dog. Remember, if you like what I do, go ahead and click that subscribe button over here near my stormtrooper. Other than that, let's get right into it. We're going to start right off talking about how you can help the Muppets through a Kickstarter campaign. The Museum of the Moving Image in New York decided that they're going to open up a great big exhibit dedicated to the Muppets and the work of Jim Henson. Excellent idea, right? In the Kickstarter, they say that due to a generous donation from the Henson family, they have now come into possession of 175 plus Jim Henson created Muppets, plus other memorabilia. They have Muppets like Elmo, Kermit, and Miss Piggy. They've got a Cookie Monster. They've got a Skeksis from the Dark Crystal. They also have Jan and Kira from the Dark Crystal. They've got a Big Bird and even some Fraggles from Fraggle Rock. Like I said, it's like over 175 puppets all together. They've also got a bunch of behind the scenes footage, old sketches of some of the original Henson drawings. They've got prototype Muppets and even a bunch of uh, photos of these Muppets being built. The exhibit's going to be broken into a bunch of different categories like Henson's early work from the 50s to 60s, the Sesame Street stuff, the Muppet Show stuff, which personally that's like some of my favorite stuff. And they're going to have an area dedicated to the Dark Crystal, Fraggle Rock, and one of my all-time favorite movies, Labyrinth. They also need some of this money to help restore some of these old Muppets. They're starting to show their age, it seems. They promise that in their restoration process, they will go with museum quality restoration aided by people from the Creature Shop, which is Jim Henson's shop where they built all these Muppets to start with. Very cool idea indeed. They also want to put together a moving exhibit that will go from museum to museum to museum to help get these Muppets out to everybody who can't make the trip to New York. In a video hosted by Neil Patrick Harris, they go into this deeper of what they want to do, how they're going to do it, and stuff like that. It's on their Kickstarter page. I'm going to link it below. As of this recording, they've already raised $32,000 of their $40,000 goal, and they have 28 days remaining. So don't be scared to donate to these people, even if it goes over, like any museum. They could really use the donations just to help fund what they have going on for the public. So like I said, check out the Kickstarter. Any little bit will help. Have you ever heard the saying, necessity is the mother of all invention? For my next story, that rings extremely true. Prisoners in an Ohio prison built two computers out of spare parts and hid them in the ceilings. So that way they could get online, use Facebook, Twitter, look at a little porn, all that kind of fun stuff while they're incarcerated. What they did is they used scrap parts that they got from a program run in the jail that takes inmates and has them rip down old computers to look at how they work, how they go together, give them a little bit of job skills, and also helps recycle old computer waste. Because of this training, however, an unexpected side effect was, like I said, two full computers built on plywood. I know some people out there that can't even take the side cover off their computer let alone build one out of scraps on plywood. So that's pretty impressive if you look at it this way. They then hijacked a link into the prison's network and using staff credentials, they were able to access evidence files, personnel files, printed out passes that allowed inmate movement and applied for fake credit cards using inmate social security numbers. I also wonder because they had access to this network in today's day and age, a lot of the prisoner release forms get sent over by email to the department that handle records. If they were in the records, did they change people's release dates and stuff? We don't know. They didn't say anything about that. They ended up getting busted when they decided to start trying to torrent stuff. They went to a torrent site. The prison's firewall blocked them from getting onto those sites. And they say that after they hit that firewall, they spent an additional three hours looking up how to get around it. And, of course, they couldn't. So yeah, these criminals' desire to steal movies and stuff is what actually got them caught in the long run. This did happen back in 2015, but they just made these records public, so I'm bringing it to you today. It's kind of amazing what you could do when you have all that free time on your hands, right? Up next, we're going to talk about something that I just find absolutely amazing. We're going to tell the story of a full-size fighter jet 
drone. Under the program, Have Raider 2. This is a joint venture by Lockheed Martin, Air Force Research Laboratory, Air Force Test Pilot School, and the Calspan Corporation. They have built a full-size F-16, well actually refitted a full-size strike-capable F-16 to fly autonomously. This has been designed to handle its own instructions and they proved this over a two-week proving course done a couple weeks ago. They're calling it a UCAV, this is an unmanned combat air vehicle, and it autonomously planned and completed air-to-ground strikes. They gave this thing mission priorities and available assets. This thing then plotted its own courses, made changes depending on different threat levels that were unknown when it was programmed, carried out its strike, and returned to formation when it was done. I mean, this thing is able to go up with other planes, leave, do its strike, and come back to formation to follow the other planes home. Kind of reminds you of that movie Stealth, doesn't it? It's a little scary, but kind of exciting too. The Air Force's long-term plan for this is to say, send out, you know, a fighter group full of F-35s and a bunch of F-16s that are unmanned. They have plenty of these F-16s, they're getting old, so they want to turn them into drones to head out and like say if they have a strike on a on an enemy encampment, they'll send the F-16s out first to take out any anti-aircraft weaponry. They can then come back, whatever one survived the attack, can come back, get in formation, and do a bombing run against the enemy bases. Something they didn't discuss in this press release though was dogfighting capabilities. Now, it was able to adapt to threats. I don't know if that means in the air or from the ground, but can you imagine what this could do in dogfighting? I don't care if you're a pilot in an F-35 or not. This F-16 should be able to outmaneuver any pilot once they get it to that level because the biggest problem in dogfights is G-lock blacking out from too much G-force. Without a pilot in the plane, you could pull as many Gs as you want until you rip the wings off. I think out of all of our technological advances, this will give us an edge against the rest of the world. All right, let's move from military applications to scientific applications of drones. Scientists from the University of Cambridge recently flew drones through an erupting volcano in Guatemala. They used an RC plane with multiple sensors to monitor heat, humidity, and thermal data in this cloud from the erupting volcano. The drones were piloted from miles away to keep these researchers at a safe distance and they collected never before attainable data. The government of Guatemala says it's such a success, they plan on bringing these researchers back later in this year and they're gonna come back with even better vehicles that have multi-gas analyzers, four stage filter pack, which I'm not sure exactly what that is, thermal cameras, devices for ash samples, and atmospheric sensors. The long-term goal of this project is to get a better understanding of what happens when a volcano erupts, why a volcano erupts, and just give us more data that can be analyzed to possibly come up with some kind of early warning system or some kind of heads up on when this is gonna happen. Keep at it, guys. Your science could change the world. For my last story, I figured I'd come up with something a little better, a little lighthearted than the one we talked about yesterday. Well, today we're gonna talk about a great escape pulled off by a dog. This is a story of a 10-year-old Great Pyrenees named General who decided he did not want to stay where his owners put him up to board in Virginia. This dog, at 4 o'clock in the morning, figured out how to open his kennel, his dog run, they say. He then opened an interior man door and got out the front door of this dog boarding home. Of course, the animal boarding spot did put out like an APB for General. They looked all over, couldn't find him. A little more than 12 hours later at 7.30 p.m., they did find this dog lounging in a neighbor's backyard looking fine. The only damage on him was a scratch on his nose, and they figured that's probably from getting the door to his kennel open, so he didn't even get hurt. This is just a nice story about a clever dog. It's funny, too, the dog's owners say this is no surprise to them. He's an extremely intelligent dog, and for him to get out of the kennel, eh, no big deal. And on that note, I'm going to wrap this up. Remember, if you like what I do, go ahead and share me with your friends. They might too. I'm here Monday through Friday, five days a week. Today is Wednesday, so I'll be back tomorrow. And until then, be safe.